Okay, uh, in the last video we got uh, set up and working in Teams and working with Eclipse. Uh, and I want to point out that as of now you kind of have all of the um, all of the basic tools that you need to work with Git and GitHub in a team. So what I'm going to do in this video is sort of uh, quickly review what those steps are, like what the sort of flow is for working with GitHub in your team. And then I'm going to talk about one particular problem you might want run into, and I will show you how to address that problem uh, should you run into it. Uh, that part may be a little bit hard for you to follow along with directly, but it's something you can refer back to uh, if you run into the, to the problem that I'm going to describe. Um, so first of all, what is your overall flow in working with Git? Um, so I'm going to not actually run the commands I'm talking about, but I'll just, I'll just uh, remind you what they are. Um, so first of all, you may do um, a git pull. This is a good thing to do frequently, just to make sure you have all the up, you're up to date with any changes other people have made in GitHub. Um, once you've done the pull, you can do some editing, um, whatever your you know changes you're making in Eclipse or whatever editor you're using. When you have something to commit, um, you'll do the commands that we've been using throughout um, the last several of these videos. So uh, you'll do get status, for example, to see what's going on. You'll do git add um, to add any new files um, or designate changed files that as things you want to commit. You'll do git commit. Um, and uh, all this sort of normal local git stuff that we've been doing since the beginning. Uh, once you've done that, it's a good idea to do another git pull um, just to make sure that um, just to make sure, again, that you're up to date with any other changes other people may have been making while you were making your changes. Um, and then once you've done that, you should do git push origin master uh, to push your changes out. Um, so this is the basic flow. You pull in new changes from GitHub. You change things. You commit them yourself. Um, you double check with another pull whether there are any other changes out there. And then you do a push to push your changes to GitHub. Um, now, one of the main keys to being successful at this is you should just do this stuff a lot. Do it all the time. You know, um, whenever you've finished some small bit of changes, it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, just just be doing this quite frequently. Uh, the other key to success is to communicate uh, with your team about what you're working on, uh, because as you see, uh, as you'll see in a second. The way that you can run into problem situations is when multiple people are changing the same thing at the same time. Um, so it is possible to resolve those problems, which is what I'm going to show you in a second, but it, it's best if possible to just avoid them if, if you can. Uh, so the main things are do these things frequently, commit, pull, and push very frequently, and communicate with your team. So now I'm going to ignore some of that advice and uh, show you some problem you might run into and then how to fix that. Uh, so let's say I'm not going to pull, I'm just going to start editing right right away. So I'm going to open up our in Notepad, since I wasn't having much luck with Eclipse. I'll just stick with Notepad for now. Uh, I'm going to edit hello.java. So I sh what I should have done is a git pull, but I'm skipping that deliberately. Um, let's say I decide, ah, this is kind of boring, let me just make this a little more informal. Um, okay, just a small tweak here. Save it, exit. Now I'm going to do git status. Okay, modified. I'm going to show you a little trick here. We have been running git add. So we do git add hello.java and then do git commit. Um, you can do that. Uh, but you can also say git commit dash a. Uh, and this dash a is saying, look, in addition to whatever files I've said I want to commit, also add any other modified files. So like this hello.java is listed as changes not staged for commit. Um, this git commit dash a says go ahead and commit those also. Um, so I'm going to do this and then I'll just put a commit message I'm trying out a more informal greeting message. Save and exit. Okay, great. Um, now again here uh, I should do a git pull before I do a git push, and you'll see why in a second, but again I'm going to skip that and just say git push origin master. So this is saying I'm going to, I made this change, I want to push it back to github. Okay, and this is just some 
So what will happen here? Ah, so now I see this gnarly error message. So a general point here is when you run these commands, it's a good idea to look at the, the output. Um, and if it looks bad, so like here I see, you know, rejected error, it looks like something is wrong. Um, it's a good idea to read it and just kind of see what it says. There may be some irrelevant information, but usually there's something useful in there. Um, and what this is telling me is merge the remote changes, e.g. git pull, before pushing again. And so it's basically telling me uh, somebody else has changed this thing. Um, you should uh, try to resolve that before you push again. Now, at this point, you could go look in. Um, actually, let's do that. Um, you can go look in uh, GitHub and say, hey, what's going on? Um, you know, it may not be clear from that error message, but um, you just kind of will know from experience that means there's some kind of a conflict between changes that somebody else made and the changes that I'm trying to make. So it'd be nice to go back into GitHub and see, well, what, well, you know, what did somebody change? So uh, if this loads up, we will see just what that is. Actually, I may even go over here. That's ah, not a good idea. We'll stay over here. We'll stay over here. Good. OK, loaded. Um, so let's see, commit, uh, hello.java got changed, hmm, let's see, hello get users, well that doesn't really look like what we have, if we go over here, look at the history, so this is the kind of thing you'll do, um, when you run into these issues, just, you know, take a look at what's going on, um, so see this it should be easier for you guys with a better screen resolution but if you click here you can see the difference so you can see you know somebody changed hello.java that's what this message is saying somebody changed it 16 minutes ago um, but if we click this link that I just clicked over here we can see what they actually changed um, and you say ah okay well they updated the greeting so we had hello get like like we had they they did something where they added users here at the end well okay so that's what's going on um, so this is just a way to use github to get a sense of what's going on but now we're going to follow the advice of this error message and do what we should have done in the first place which is to git pull before we do a git push so if we do that here we're going to see the more common type of error that you may run into when you have these sorts of conflicts um, so here we have, this is uh, your basic merge conflict message, merge conflict in hello.java. Uh, automatic merge failed, fix conflicts, and then commit the result. So this means somebody else changed hello.java, someone else on your team, you changed hello.java, those changes conflict with each other, um, in that when git tried to merge the changes itself, it, it didn't know what to do. And if you run git status, you can also see um, what the conflicts are. Okay, there's um, conflict in hello.java. It says both modified. And now we'll just open up. So the, the way to fix these is to just look in the file and see what's going on. Um, so when there's this conflict, Git will print some information that shows what the two different versions have. Um, and it always has this format that you see here. Um, so there's three um, it lines that Git has inserted plus the different versions of the changes in the file. So this uh, first line that begins with a bunch of less than signs and says head, this is the version that you had before you tried to do the, the pull. Um, this could be more than one line. In this case, it's only one line. Then there's an equals, a bunch of equal signs. And then below that, uh, there is the version that um, was in GitHub that you tried to pull in. So above the equal sign is your version, and then below the equal sign is the, the conflicting version that someone else on your team had made. Um, and then below that, showing where their version ends, is a, a bunch of greater than signs, uh, and this commit ID, which identifies the, the, 
the commit at which they made these changes. Um, so your goal here is just to edit all of this um, into the way you want the file to actually look. So let's say we're, well, you know, we added hi there, changed hello to hi there, they added users. Why don't we just keep both in this case? So we'll keep the hi there, we'll put users, and then we just have to delete all this extra stuff. Whoops. Okay, we can delete this. And then save. Now the key thing here is you're just editing this file to be the way you want it to look. Um, so you don't need to worry too much about um, the different versions or what Git tried to do. The important thing is just to understand what you changed, what the other person changed, how do you actually want this to be. Like you have to decide after this, what do I want this file to actually have. You can decide that however you want. Um, so you just want to make sure that at the end you have in this file whatever you whatever you want to have in it. Um, so we've done that. And then um, as you can see from this git status message, it says use git add and or git commit dash a. So let's just do a git add hello.java. This is just a way of saying that that's, you know, now has the version that we want. And then we do a git commit. Um, so we'll say, we don't actually, in this case, we, we already have a message that's just saying this was emerged, so we don't need to add anything here. Just exit. You could have added some additional clarification in that message if you wanted to. And now that we've done that, we can do our push. And then we're in good shape. And if we go back to GitHub, oops sure if I want to go back to GitHub after that last effort, but if we were to go back to GitHub, you can look and see that it now has your version of hello.java, yeah, I forget that part, uh, that you just edited. Um, so again, if you get into these situations uh, where you have merge conflicts, uh, the important thing is just use git status to see which files are conflicting, and then go through those files one at a time, open them up, edit them until they look the way you want them to look, and then uh, do another uh, git commit and you'll be in good shape. Um, so I just want to review frequent, or sorry, review quickly. Uh, you should push and pull frequently. Um, you should commit frequently. You should communicate with your teammates and you should do a push before you do a pull so that you get the chance to resolve any conflicts that may have come up. Um, so this is a little bit of an advanced topic. It is something you'll probably run into uh, as you're working with Git, and um, I hope this helps you to resolve the situation if you if you get into it.